So hello everyone. Uh, my name is Ali Mustafa, and I have Parvez with me. Hello, Parvez. Hello everyone. Uh, so welcome to this amazing webinar, uh, Machine Learning with Ali Mustafa. So Ali Mustafa, Mr. Ali Mustafa, is a, he's a software innovator at Intel, uh, Google Certified Educator Level One and Level Two, and he's a TEDx speaker with uh, many other great achievements coined to his name. And also, uh, Mr. Ali Mustafa is a training specialist in uh, Mumbai with expertise in machine learning and digital marketing domain. Uh, recently, Ali Mustafa has conducted sessions on like AP Shah Institute of Technology at Thane. Uh, recently, he conducted a session at on Intel AI certification uh, and also in Adarwa College, uh, Mumbai. So, I hope this uh, session will be some amazing one with some hands-on sessions and all. Hope. Uh, um, Ali Mustafa, you can carry on. Uh, thank you so much for the introduction. Um, uh, Parvez has made uh, Parvez and his team has made a video. So um, here is the video I am going to play. Please. Have a Hello everyone. Hello everyone. You don't celebrate your birthdays. What you do is you celebrate change. Hello, everyone. So that was an uh, awesome video developed by Parvez and his team, and I really liked it. And it was a part of the marketing material. Thank you so much for this. Uh, let's start with the webinar, and I will share my screen. Meanwhile, you can open this URL. Uh, this is where you will get all the resources for this session, including the presentation link after the event, um, the feedback for feedback form where you can get the certificates. And also you will get uh, the code lab link here. So make sure that you open this and keep this in another tab open. And till then, I will share the screen. I hope everyone has uh, gone to that link and um, uh, as part of the telegram group where you will get all the details so mostly we are going to cover a hands-on lab and we are going to discuss about machine learning and how we are going to kind of um, implement that in our day-to-day -day life feedback being uh, also yeah, the certificate is auto generated so as soon as you fill the feedback form you will get the certificate let's start
Okay, so hello everyone. Uh, my name is Ali Mustafa, and as I already discussed, and uh, you have seen the video, what I usually do is um, I tag myself as I build human networks, and uh, I currently am Google Certified Educator A Level One and A Level Two, and part of Intel Software Innovator Program. I'm also a Microsoft Student Partner, and uh, my day-to-day -day life is more about exploring and going to different places and uh, teaching a lot of students about machine learning, artificial intelligence, and how they work in day-to-day -day life. So these are the photos of my sessions, which you have my, uh, which you might have seen in the video already. And this one is one of my favorites, where I click a selfie with a lot of students. And you might have seen that "Hello World" video, which uh, was played earlier. So I usually like to take, um, you know, uh, the one-minute video of the lively audience. But today we are meeting uh, on an online forum, so I will take some screenshots though. <laughs> so yeah. So I am not um, a guy which has like 10 to 15 years of experience, but um, I started my journey when I was 15. And uh, since then, I've been doing machine learning. I've been learning different technologies and implementing them on a daily basis. So uh, like my popularity is just because of the youth, uh, the, the youngsters who are not able to get uh, so much of information in colleges about machine learning, blockchain, and latest technologies. So they tend to kind of attend a lot of my sessions. And uh, that's uh, a lot major widespread. And uh, like I have done some amazing work when I was a part of Google Crowdsource community. We published uh, a data set called as Inclusive Images 2.0 where we presented a paper at Neural IPS, which was largest machine learning conference. I'm also currently an organizer of TensorFlow user group, and uh, that is the first ever TensorFlow user group in India. And we have over 2,000 plus members on our Telegram group. So I will share the link at the end of the session where you can join. So yeah, uh, one of my major achievements also include being invited at TensorFlow World Ignite that, that happened in US Santa Clara, where I talked about machine learning bi and biases. Though I was not able to visit in person, but um, yeah. So I am part of uh, uh, Intel Software Innovator Program, where we kind of uh, work with uh, different hardwares, and uh, we try to solve daily problems, uh, problems faced by farmers, or uh, like for example, uh, in the recent times there was uh, a stampage happened in Mumbai uh, at a railway station, and uh, I wanted to do something about it, so I used uh, Intel hardwares and developed. A mechanism which can actually detect a stampage before it is happening so it can send live updates to the authorities that there is a possibility uh, because of the movement of uh, people on the station there is a possibility that a stampage can happen and this is uh, like a part where uh, we as intel software innovators come into place and the intel the corporation comes into place and provides us hardware they provide us support and we as uh, independent developers or independent innovators uh, use that hardware and support and develop some amazing applications. So I used um, a lot of uh, tools of Intel, which includes uh, neural st compute stick and uh, a camera and open window toolkit, which is uh, we will discuss about this later. As a Microsoft student partner, uh, we are representatives of Microsoft on campus ambassadors. So it's like uh, we represent Microsoft at our campuses. And we talk about different technologies which Microsoft is working on and uh, try to bring some reforms in the local community. So let's start. So machine learning is um, more fascinating. And we talk about India specifically. Um, this is the map of India. So as I like to say it in Hindi, Hamara Pyara Bharat. And uh, here, if you see, India is a country but with a very diverse crowd, OK? So there is no country in the world which has so much of diverse audience, so much of diverse languages, so much of diverse culture, and so many religions, OK? And we are proud of that because uh, we we are an example of how to how we live, uh, you know, unity and diversity. So how machine learning is related so much to india and why i am talking so my approach is usually going uh, through the applications and then understanding the applications and moving forward to understanding how we can implement these applications uh, using technology okay so if you don't know how to imp how to uh, where to apply then how to apply is of no use so understanding where to apply is very much useful 
then knowing how to apply it okay because you can learn about machine learning by just googling you know two three times but uh, applying how to apply machine learning at a specific given problem is is more of a trick so when i talk about india the first major problem which we have is that the language barrier so most of you might be speaking different languages right so as i'm communicating in english because i feel everyone is kind of speaking english but that is not the case most of the major uh, one of the major languages which we which are spoken across india is hindi followed by telugu tamil kannad marathi malayalam uh, then gujarati so these are the languages these are the prominent languages which are spoken by a lot of people like millions of people so if you see the count here like 422 million people 60 million people 83 million people uh, so these are like massive amount of people who speak these languages but apart from them there are uh, a lot of people who speak uh, these languages in a very small format for example we were doing a survey last year and we found out that there are languages called as avdhi rangpuri rangbashi rangdeli and these all are languages which are spoken by more than 8 to 10 million speakers in remote parts of west bengal uh, west bengal bihar and all these states so languages have been there and uh, it uh, actually represents our culture so when i look closely like approximately we have 1.3 billion people and we have more than 30 languages which are officially counted that okay we count this many languages but uh, when i look deeper um, there are more than 1600 dialects what does that mean that means hindi is one of the languages there are different formats or different dialects of hindi so let's say if i am in mumbai and if i if i say in hindi hum log yahan pe webinar attend kar rahe hain that means that each one of us is here attending a webinar but let's say if i go to um, if i go to like lucknow or up and i say that hum webinar attend kar rahe hain now that implies that hum implies to as an individual and not as a group of people okay so now the word remains the same the language remains the same but the dialect changes the place changes and uh, the whole concept uh, the whole meaning of the word changes okay so why is it a problem kind of because most of the time what we uh, face is that uh, we don't have a single mechanism or we cannot develop a single keyboard which can be helpful for all of us so if you see uh, google making english right so english is like um, a combination of english and hindi so just imagine like uh, english we originated a new language just for the keyboard shake because uh, we usually type in hindi and but that is uh, usually written in english so yeah so that is one aspect one problem is that we don't um, have one standard language and if uh, we want to kind of uh, make keyboards then that is like uh, uh, there is uh, we have to use a lot of keyboards or we need to generate a lot of uh, input devices and uh, majority of our audience is uh, not actually using keyboards so they usually prefer not to use keyboard just because so if you go to a rickshaw wala or if you go to someone who is not uh, who is not uh, studied or done a formal education he will say that hey man you know don't uh, show me uh, the address just tell me what it is and i will tell you where the address belongs to okay and uh, the second aspect is understanding the audience how indians react on internet or how we how our population is kind of uh, you know using the applications so if you see social media this is a, a snapshot of twitter and uh, this are the number of tweets like 1.2 million 1.4 million tweets and these are for like just as for a stream or shop using set for trp now i am not a big fan of uh, big boss but uh, these are the trends of big boss when it was running and um, to be surprised that it was like fifth highest trend worldwide if you see it uh, in terms of uh, how this um, uh, like how indian audience react to a tv serial okay so this is one of the aspects of it okay so this is one of the type of audiences we have and there might be a lot of different audiences as well but this is one of the audiences we have and uh, when i talk about um, different types of audiences tiktok comes into the place because tiktok uses machine learning on a very very wide basis and uh, tiktok caters to an audience which is not so much educated or not so much um, you know uh, 
not so much uh, and they don't have access to technology so much and uh, yeah so if you see a lot of content generated on tiktok that is mostly uh, about uh, people who have easy access to technology for example poor people or people who are uh, drivers or people who are um, you know uh, like we can call them watchmen or sabzi wala so all these people who are who belong to a, a who 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 cannot have access to a laptop but they want to create content they want to kind of uh, show their skills so this is one part where uh, they kind of come and create content and uh, with the help of machine learning tiktok uh, makes sure that uh, the content is put across and it is viral in different segments okay so yeah so talking about tiktok uh, in india if i talk about tiktok uh, the rise of tiktok is awesome like uh, you 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 might uh, want to be the ceo of tiktok because um, within within a year within like 6 uh, to 7 months tiktok was on rise uh, more than 30% indians have it in shawl uh, more than 1 hr we spend on tiktok and uh, we are the country with most number of downloads of tiktok including whatsapp obviously so yeah and the reality is that we um, the number of the penetration of internet of indians is not even 50% so let's say if uh, i talk about how many indians are there on internet from 1.3 billion people we are not even 50% on internet that means like around uh, 750 million people might be there on internet okay so that is the scenario when we are 50% on internet so let's say if we are a country like us united states and we are 100% on internet like 100 not even uh, 80% on internet understand uh, the amount of uh, the amount of people which will be on internet and obviously the uh, if i talk about the cheapest internet like jio we were using 1 gb per month to 2 gb per days so we need to consume something we need to consume content and uh, that's how like companies like tiktok and youtube are making a lot of money because uh, indians are consuming so much of content on a daily basis so now how does that uh, really kind of sums up and um, like how does that affect us uh, or how does that affect machine learning in general uh, in india specifically so what i'm trying to uh, like convey here is that understand the audience first okay so if i am telling you that we are consuming 2 gb data per day so what we are doing of that 2 gb data per day so one of the examples is that um, we use snapchat a lot but uh, snapchat ceo said that india is too poor to consider for exa- uh, expansion and that was uh, quoted by an ex employee which uh, the snapchat uh, ceo not really said but within hours uh, what we did was uh, we put uh, we put put in uh, the rating of snapchat to one star within hours okay and we didn't stop there so we went uh, on to put one star rating to snap deal <laughs> no snapdeal had nothing to do with the controversy they were far away from whatever uh, uh, the snapchat ceo said but because snap and snap were related so they got uh, they got caught in the controversy and they lost uh, like uh, they got uh, rated 3.2 stars on the play store and talking about uh, rating on play stores a very recent trend like few days back we rated uh, tiktok to 1.6 stars because of the controversy of youtube versus tiktok though the rating has regained and we, we need to understand that we cannot just go and add reviews to play store applications uh, uh, because uh, google kind of removes them on a later stage but uh, this gives us a lot of insight about what type of audience which we have and how machine learning is used by google on tiktok and snapchat and all different applications so if you see google here they remove all the fake ratings and probably by using machine learning because they are not going to manually remove each and every rating and uh, so they use machine learning and they saw that if the user has installed an application and the user is using tiktok for a let's say 10 15 minutes and then if uh, all this criteria is met then i am going to kind of uh, remove this rating or i am going to keep this rating so that's why you have been seeing a lot of promotion of uh, voice first or ai first or where we say that uh, we want users to switch to voice applications and you might be seeing google pushing google assistant uh, amazon pushing alexa and uh, you know apple pushing siri that use our applications use our uh, you know voice first uh, applications or chatbots 
now why why would you uh, like if you think why is it happening now and why it didn't happen five years back is because uh, that um, a lot of indians are now having access to internet and the language barrier which we discussed earlier is now real so uh, most of the applications are not able to kind of uh, understand what we type most of the applications are not able to understand what we speak and hence we need some some system which can understand different dialects easily and um, i feel that voice is the future because uh, voice can understand 10 different dialects uh, within one model and it can actually really understand human beings very easily than using keyboards so yeah and um, answering the question what we have the most so we have the manpower the most the population the most and we use them effectively in foreign land in terms of uh, manpower so uh, if you see a lot of jobs foreign uh, most of the indians are have occupied job from c level employees to like driver positions so like we are there everywhere you you go in a country and you won't find us that's like kind of impossible so how actually uh, we are going to like uh, how actually machine learning um, so if i talk about how how uh, the ideal machine learning or ai system would look like is like this which has memory which has uh, you know kind of skill set or intelligence so this is how a human brain looks like okay which is educated has an opportunity has a skill set has a potential uh, has some amount of creativity or has some amount of memory and when i talk about ai systems they can try to replicate few of this so let's start with some technicalities and let's start with uh, machine learning the intelligence behind internet so what is machine learning so if you have been seeing machine learning it is quite popular across uh, internet in 2020 so if you're starting uh, starting machine learning from scratch you know that you already have a lot of competition with you okay um, because a lot of people are learning machine learning with you. Okay. Now, before we start or we go into theory, uh, sorry, technical, I need to, um, I need to tell you that, you know, nothing is kind of impossible. Okay. So this is an image. I took it from a memeing site and it says that, come on guys, it's not rocket science. Someone who is learning music theory has been told and someone who is here, uh, like, um, learning rocket science has been doing that come on guys it is not music theory so nothing is much difficult if the trainer is good enough and uh, you are ready enough to understand it and you are putting 100 percent attention here so how does it happen how does machine learning happen so usually we have a term called as teaching set so it is something uh, which is a data set which uh, trains the algorithm and then there is something which we have a model which actually uh, uses this teaching set to train that algorithm. And uh, over time, uh, the model classifies it properly, correctly or incorrectly, and uh, it gets smarter over time with experience. So if I, if I want to explain machine learning to a granny, I would say that a machine learning is a human being. Okay, so can you tell me in the comment section what this uh, guy is doing? Yeah, can you? I am watching the comment section. So tell, can, can you tell me what this guy is doing? Is he happy? Is he sad? Is he crying? Is he laughing? Can you tell me what this guy is up to? Put it into the comment section. I will check the comments and then we will conclude something. Yes. Okay. So he's crying, right? Uh, he is mostly crying. And uh, so why he's crying? Can anyone tell me? Yeah, put your comments in the comment section. That would be better. why this guy might be crying he's hungry okay that's that's an acceptable excuse uh, excuse uh, sorry a reason he's hungry he wants something yes he might got have heard yes 
his mother had beaten him <laughs> okay someone has a bad experience i guess <laughs> um for toys someone shouted him okay so there are so many so many things which might have happened to him right uh his parents okay <laughs> so that is uh, one of the funniest comment his parents might be doing tiktok okay so um this guy might be crying because of n number of reasons okay and uh, i assume that he might be hungry or he might have turned potty right that's why he is crying so how are you able to conclude that how are you able to conclude that because you have seen a lot of crying children earlier and you know the reason why so i so i am usually not a fan of like you know children's and uh, when i see them in trains so if someone is like kind of you know uh, i if i go do an eye to eye contact what i usually do is i scare them out again okay? so i'll make faces and then they'll start crying and then the parents is like you know don't look at this guy so i know like we all know how um, we as individuals kind of you know um we, we can interpret okay this guy is crying so there might be x y z reasons to it okay so how this child learns uh, so he is very small now so he doesn't probably know how to ask for food or he doesn't probably know if he did a party so tell his mom that okay i did a party and you know clean me up so he knows nothing he knows nothing so what um, what he does he he knows only one thing that cry so he cries and he lives up to the uh, and and he lives it up to the people to decide why he is crying and then we try to figure out n number of things and then we conclude on one okay so yeah that is something um, one of the reasons so machine learning is nothing but um, so i consider humans as machines because obviously so let's say if you we were born into this world we were given a label so my name is ali and that is my label okay so your name might be you know X Y Z, and that is your label. Okay, so every one of us, when we were born, we were given a label, and then we trained, uh, we kind of learned different things from an environment. So, for example, I was born in a Muslim family, so I learned um, how to be a good Muslim. If you're born in a Hindu family, so you learned how to be a good Hindu, and you learned your scriptures, um, and uh, we learned ours. But uh, there's a twist. So I was born um, in in a so where I was born, uh, my neighbors were or Marathi. and um, we lived in a society where uh, yeah, like most of them were marathis and there were only few muslims but uh, because um, the relations were good and we were you know very happy neighborhood so i usually learn marathi before learning urdu okay and that was because um, i uh, like all were speaking marathi so i grasped marathi before learning urdu so i i'm more fluent in marathi than being in urdu because of the environment okay now someone living in saudi might be more familiar and uh, they they might be more familiar with arabic than hindi or urdu or marathi or any other languages okay so that is uh, how machine learning works really okay so how humans works same way how machines kind of learn but uh, there is a twist so machines need uh, the instruction of one and zero but we as humans need graphical instructions so if you want to make sure that this guy understand what an apple looks like you need to show him how a apple looks like so you need to show him a real apples so for example uh let me show you something okay so what is this i will bring it closer to the camera what is this fruit okay mango 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 people saying mango can you be more specific which kind of mango why do you know that this is a mango yeah because you learned about mangoes um, and yeah alfonso so it's uh, yellow color um and it's mango okay so how did you know that this is a mango who told you i didn't tell you who told you that this is a mango i'm watching the comment section 
mom told you uh, someone's mom told them that this is a mango my teacher told me <laughs> that this is a mango and then after that uh, she showed me so many mangoes and then i am still confused how to classify langra uh, i know rajapuri because that's big massive apart from that every, everything is a mango to me <laughs> okay so um, you know, you know our grandpas or uh, someone's grandpas told them that this is a mango or we learned in our childhoods and uh, we remember uh, today so how many of you remember uh, johnny johnny yes papa Uh, how do we know uh, how many of you how many of you know johnny johnny as papa mostly every one of us yes and i still remember johnny johnny as papa eating sugar no papa telling lies no papa you know why why is it because we were told so many times right so um how many of you remember uh, the periodic table how many of you remember the periodic table so how many of you know what is periodic table <laughs> i i assume all of you are engineers so you might have studied even 12th and uh, you might know what a periodic table is oh our uh, commenters our our attendees are uh, very smart i guess they all know <laughs> so most of the people don't remember um you know how periodic table looks like so when people don't even like chemistry to few extent yes i i even don't remember the whole periodic table apart from the first line which was taught by us to an amazing uh, by an amazing sir so he gave a sequence that okay this is how you remember the first row of periodic table with a song and all okay so that's how you you can tell that okay we don't really remember how the periodic table looks like really but you remember johnny johnny yes papa and why is it because johnny johnny yes papa was taught you to so many times and periodic table just for a year okay so yeah so let's let's try to solve a machine learning problem okay so uh, because everyone is a teenager so i'm assuming that all of you are teenagers or most of you are from an age group of 16 to maximum 30 uh, uh, though this example might not be good for everyone but this is a very crazy example and i can explain so because i love this example very much because uh, when i interact with teenagers they really love this example as well so what do you see is emojis okay and as teenagers we interact with each other on instagram on snapchat using emojis a lot okay uh, there are a lot of emojis to be very specific there are more than 3000 emojis to be very specific there are 3423 emojis and it may vary uh, regarding to different um, uh, users for example google has a different set of emojis apple has a different set of emojis and so on and so forth okay so we have taken a small subset of this emojis okay not all 3000 emojis a small subset of this emojis okay now what we are trying to do is we are trying to find the relationship between two individuals uh, using this um, so let's say if you want to understand how two people are in relationship or not what is the basic criteria if you understand that there are two people who are in, in a relationship girlfriend boyfriend kind of so what do you think what is the basic uh, idea how do you understand them like um, what is the basic criteria of you deducing that they are girlfriends and boyfriends so for me uh, there is no specific criteria because um, <laughs> so if i go to bandstand <laughs> Uh, in mumbai that's a place um, so if people live in mumbai they might know so there is a very hot spot right so if you go there you will find a lot of couples and you might see them kissing you might see them you know juggling and all that so that is like one aspect of identifying them but another aspect is so if you want to went, find your friend is um, in a relationship or not so what you simply do is you don't ask him because he is going to lie human beings okay so what do you what do you typically do is you open his keyboard you don't open his whatsapp you open his keyboard and you see the recent emojis so that is a very good way of identifying how the person is because the emojis which we use mostly will be there in the recent emojis so if he is in a relationship he might be using certain kinds of emojis very frequently and we all know what that certain kind of emojis are now you are adults and i don't need to kind of tell you 
what that setting emojis are. But for solving this problem, I will kind of il illustrate how this might go. OK, so um, the data set is big. OK, so the real world the, in real world problem, data sets are big. They are large. They are massive. 100 GB, one tetabyte, one petabyte of data sets. So we cannot actually put the complete data set into machine learning model. What we need to do is we need to identify specific features and put that into the model. So here we need to zero down on some features. OK, we need to say that, OK, these are the features which we need. And uh, so there are 3000 emojis, so we cannot put 3000 emojis inside a machine learning model. We need to zero down on some specific emojis saying that, OK, this is the feature. This is the feature. This is the feature which we are looking for if we are identifying couples in recent emojis. OK, uh, for the time being, we will exclude friend zone. So sorry, guys, um, you are excluded everywhere. But yeah, <laughs> so that is there. Um, so the first set of uh, features which I tend, uh, so I'm not in a relationship, so I don't know, really know how that works. But um, my friends helped me zero down some emojis. So there I am with some amount of emojis. So these are some of the emojis they told me which I have circled are uh, used by couples. And uh, this is another set. So let's mark on here. So. So this is like, um, you know, some of more emojis which they think are used by couples. OK. So um, this is um, like um, we have a large data set. We concluded we removed some features and we have that features. Now we are going to pass that features into our machine learning models. Now, now you please tell me if these are emojis are uh, OK or not, because I don't really know. So because I don't really interact <laughs> OK, uh, using a lot of emojis. So yeah. OK, so how does the machine learning system might look like uh, using this uh, things? So let's say now we need to analyze or we need to put in some features, OK? So we call features usually as our X. OK, so don't cry. I'm not talking about your X. X in terms of variable uh, features as X. OK, and when I talk about there are multiple features, we say X1, X2, X3, and X4 and Xn, multiple features, X1, X2, X3, X4, Xn. OK, and then there is a output Y target. For, for us, the Y is in a relationship or not in a relationship for us the x is the number of features which we extracted okay so yeah that's it so let's uh, let's move forward and let's uh, play a small game so what we are going to play is i am going to display uh, a set of emojis and you need to uh, say me uh, you need to write in comments uh, which uh, which movie or which song it is okay so the first one which song is this come on comments keep your comments going Kali Kali Akhe, someone said. Uh, more comments to come. Okay, someone is very specific. Ye jo teri Kali Kali Akhe. So, <laughs> okay. Um, okay, uh, for people who don't know Hindi, I'm really, really sorry. I tried to be inclusive, but um, uh, yeah, uh, sorry for that. If you don't know Hindi, these are Hindi movies and Hindi songs. Uh, I, I will try to include some English movie next times. Sorry for this. But uh, yeah, if you know Hindi, uh, please uh, go ahead and guess it. Yeah, the song is Teri Kali Kali Aakhya. Uh, which movie is this? Again, a Hindi. Sorry for this. Um, I, I should have included uh, different uh, live emojis, but yeah. All is Hindi. It's not Bazigar. Mo which movie is this? This one, this one. We are talking about this emoji set. No. Which movie? Not the song. Not really. Not really. 
Okay, <laughs> I don't have a smart audience as it seems. <laughs> audience, comment. Billu Barber. Yeah, that's the movie. Billu Barber, right? Billu Barber. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, which movie is this? So the last emoji which we saw was an exception, okay, where uh, it was a bit confusing, not so easy. Which movie is this? This is straightforward ninja, right? Yeah, this is ninja. Uh, okay, someone says, how do you watch Hindi movies? I don't usually watch Hindi movies. I watch uh, Christopher Nolan's movies. But um, I thought including that for my audience would uh, not be so much useful because uh, they might be struck in Inception, maybe. So yeah. <laughs> okay, so this is Nija. Uh, the last one, uh, which one is this? So this one is very exciting. Okay, which one is this? Jurwa, Dostana, mm -hmm. no, no, no. Jurwa 2, yes. Jurwa and then 2. 2, right? 2. So Jurwa 2. Yeah. So that was the movie. Um, okay. Crazy. So you saw there are some exceptions where we are not able to kind of uh, use it properly, but there are some kind of um, features which directly prompt us to say some movie's name very easily. So what we need is a lot of training data sets. So we need a lot of recent emoji screenshots, obviously. So I got to some of my friends and collected some of their screenshots, recent emoji screenshots, and uh, associated if they are single or not, or not or not. So as I told you, friend zone is not included as of now, but we will include it sometime later if you guys commented okay so currently we are uh, kind of identifying if this guy or a girl is in a relationship or not using the recent emojis and uh, we have uh, collected some amount of examples here and what we are going to do is we are going to write a model we are going to write a machine learning model which is going to help us identify or classify this from x and y okay so that's there now once we train the model we are going to save that model into a file, into a format, which can be retrieved later. And then we can use that for making predictions. For example, we train the machine learning model, we save that model, and now we are going to use a set of recent emojis and pass that into our system. And then say that if it is this much person accurate, that they might be in a relationship or they might not be in a relationship. Okay. so. The problem which you are trying to solve here is a classification problem. Okay. What is a classification problem? Either this guy is in a relationship or he is not in a relationship. Okay. So, yes or no. Discrete output. Okay. Whenever there are discrete outputs, it is a classification problem. For example, yes, no, or friend zone. Discrete, three discrete outputs. Classification problem. More examples of classification problem. Um, types of fruits, apple, banana, orange. Classification problem, OK? Um, types of songs, genres of songs. Types of movies, horror, classification problem, OK? So can you give me some more examples of classification problem? So we are actually using discrete. Um, yeah, you will get a loan or not. Amazing, Sandeep. That was a very great example. Classification problem. You will get known or not. Classification problem. Okay. So discrete. Something which is discrete is a classification problem. Now, what is a regression problem? Okay. So when something is not discrete is a regression problem. So something which is not discrete is continuous. So continuous is a regression problem. Okay. So what is continuous? Continuous as uh, so. OK, there is another example by OK, by Khushi and oh no. 
okay i forgot uh, yeah gokul exam pass or fail <laughs> so he's still thinking of an exam in pandemic that's great okay this is or not amazing okay stock price continuous value why it is continuous value because it it trades it it can be plus 1 minus 1 it can be plus 1 cent or minus 1 cent plus 1 paisa minus 1 paisa it's continuous okay another example of continuous value is house prices house prices can increase by 1 lakh decrease by 1 lakh 2 lakh it is continuous in nature another example of continuous values can can someone tell me in the comments cricket prediction is it more like a classification problem don't you think if he is going to win or lose virus spread count yes it is a continuous problem because uh, there can be you know number 1 plus number 1 uh, minus and it can be 1 lakh plus insurance uh, insurance means uh, uh, like in insurance there can be one aspect but usually if i talk about yes or no problem insurance like if you are getting an insurance if you are not getting an insurance car sales price yes so price includes in a continuous value so major major machine learning problems are either classification or regression okay so these are called as supervised machine learning algorithms okay supervised because we have input data we have output data we know we know our x we know our y right we know our x we know our y so what we have we have a supervised machine learning algorithms now what if we don't have y we just have screenshots we don't know why so that is unsupervised machine learning problems okay so yeah so i'm not going to go much into deeper so i'm going to um, give you more insights uh, later as well so on a serious note by the way uh, this is how the boys group looks like so boys are usually crazy okay so we don't usually kind of uh, use emojis uh, we use uh, gold stickers okay girls group might also look like that but uh, i'm i'm not been in one so i don't really know so yeah so you might be thinking how this all started you know who invented machine learning who invented deep learning who invented artificial intelligence and how this all started got started uh, in the early days so Uh, a very good example of uh, so uh, of machine learning could be starting from AlphaGo and how things uh, turned uh, uh, you know turned good after uh, the discovery and uh, like after it was it was back in like around 1960s and 1970s that machine learning was so much good okay so um, in a previous example uh, we had uh, stickers and stickers were exceptions okay. so yeah so your what we are trying to do is uh, we are trying to understand who are the people behind machine learning okay just so let me set up my mobile phone properly because then i will not be able to kind of uh, see you guys uh, see your comments and i guess comments it's so much fun to see the comments so i don't want to miss on that so just give me a second and i will set up my mobile phone it's almost set up okay so i have my mobile phone set up here okay so um, um don't worry about feedback form they will be sent in the um, uh, in the telegram group as well so when when i go to the history we need to remember our fathers okay the forefathers who actually invented all these technologies so these are the some names which won during a award for their uh, amazing research in machine learning deep learning and artificial intelligence one of my favorite is jan ligen um and geoffrey hinden they are both are my favorites okay but again uh, mac cathy and uh, yosha also contributed a lot of amazing uh, uh, research materials and uh, they won the uh, tuning award so this is a nobel prize in computer science okay so uh, this is the highest uh, you can say honor in computer science so they were given that and uh, then there are people who didn't want award but have contributed massively in um, in bringing in bringing machine learning and deep learning and artificial intelligence to every individual and that's jeff dean uh, francis uh, the creator of keras and ai winter was a hackathon which led to a series of research in deep learning and artificial intelligence so uh, yeah 
so these are the amazing people who who you should remember um, okay obviously this is not a, this is a a very limited list there are so many people so many contributors who contribute over time and i might be doing a lot of injustice to a lot of people but um, obviously there's a limitation this is this small slide so i have did not mention a lot of names but yeah i admire every one of them and uh, this is jan ligen doing machine learning guess the year which year it is guess the year which year it is this guy is doing machine learning in which year and he's able to predict uh, and handwritten digits so i will keep this question for you guys to put in comments google it okay do whatever you want just come back with an answer because this is very important if you're learning machine learning you need to understand you know they were doing this uh, when there were no computer resources when there were very less compute resources and uh, we are doing the same so we are covering the same example in 2020 okay so if you are doing the same example in 2020 welcome hello world to machine learning so this is hello world to machine learning and an, an example a, prob, a problem statement which everyone today solves very easily within seconds and jan ligen solved that in 19s and uh, 1990s okay so this is so don't don't be like you know don't keep give me that 1970s you know i'm not your teacher kind of stuff give me a specific year okay <laughs> search on google you have google on your fingertips okay do that cool so uh, most of the people tell that um, machine learning is and artificial intelligence is going to replace a lot of jobs and if you remember this episode of tom and jerry you know that um, a lot of people are um, you know they are um, uh, they are very concerned about the jobs that uh, if ai is implemented my job will be lost or xyz problems so what is the reality the reality is that computer science as it progresses it is going to generate more and more jobs rather than take it away okay so i'm talking about computer science in general okay so what i'm talking about is the replacement of job is going to happen in industries in manufacturing units so for example today elon musk has automated most of the tesla plants okay alibaba group okay they have automated most of their inventories they use robots okay but how many jobs have they replaced they have replaced few jobs okay who were responsible in monitoring these machines and they were humans they made mistakes okay but if you put a machine there uh, in manufacturing units and you know automobile industries they 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 tend to be more effective than humans okay but how many jobs did they generate so they generated a job uh, for uh, obviously making that robot maintaining that robot um, uh, they use batteries so people who develop batteries got job because more batteries were needed uh, they needed alloy so people who develop alloy uh, got more jobs so indirectly they created more jobs okay rather than taking away more jobs and um, the future holds um, is the future uh, is very tight so when i say tight due to even even the covid pandemic the future is like uh, for recent graduates is very difficult uh, so you need to level up you need to skill up so if you tell me that you are learning um, uh, a programming let's say you are learning php now okay so now php is not a bad language okay php is a very good language i started my career with learning php okay so if you are learning php in 2020 i am expecting you to be master of php okay you cannot just be there and say that i know php uh, intermediately or moderately that is not going to work in 2020 because php was made like years ago okay and the relevance is not that much as of now so new people are uh, new startups and new companies are adapting react they are start, uh, reacting you know java script based frameworks so if you are not a master of php now uh, you are not getting a job okay so understand the growth and uh, the technology so let's say today uh, like we have around 150 people in our live stream okay now i assume all of you learn machine learning okay so is everyone going to get a job though there are openings yes but uh, i fear that because most of us are going to just learn it till hello world and they are not going to continue the journey to learn more and more and more and become an expert of that technology okay so that is the problem with most of the students of every 
uh, every like country mostly but in india that is more specific we start something we don't end that okay so that's a major problem now maaf karna thoda idhar udhar nikal jata hu right you know but uh, that is like kind of um, i wanted to you know say uh, give you an insight of so what is machine learning at the end of the day it is a study study of algorithm which learns from examples and experience and um, so we have seen a lot of problems like for example uh, identifying apple and oranges so what we are going to need is a lot of manual rules and that we have done in our previous example so what we are going to do is uh, we are going to do uh, we are going to code up a classifier okay and we are going to do a hands on lab so i'm going to share a code lab with you in the telegram group so please go and have a look at that and we are going to continue with our hands on session you don't need any installation though uh, if you have google chrome that is fine okay so that is good so i have shared the code lab on the telegram and you can see it here so you can go visit and have the url there i will share the telegram group link again in the presentation so because there are a lot of resources so i cannot individually you know type of uh, give you the urls so that is not going to solve the problem because individually giving you the url again and again you have to type it so instead go to that you, you don't need to be on telegram okay that is totally fine you don't need to subscribe to the channel uh, you just need to kind of go there and then you will find the link this is a short form of the link so you can just go there and navigate that is fine you don't need to kind of get uh, make an account on telegram okay you can just go there and have a look at the link that is fine as well okay so i'm going on this link and showing you so i'm going to demonstrate this code lab with me so let's continue so i will wait for you guys for like 5 minutes so that you guys are here and then we can uh, start together okay so you will see something like this um on your screen what you have to do is you have to open in playground you have to click open in playground okay so i'm waiting for you guys in the comments just tell me that whenever you are ready with the code lab okay so as soon as you are ready uh, we are going to i joined already so one person is here okay okay we will we will wait for like 1 minute for others to join so that um, everyone is on the code lab so that when i explain they don't have to go back and then you know understand it so yeah so now if you want to alter the code what you need to do is you need you, so you can see a button here okay the button says open in playground so you can click on that and it will open this code lab into a playground mode where you can actually edit this code okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to click on open in playground so that i can edit the code okay so let's um, okay someone is telling me to wait okay i'll wait for one more minute because again we are running short of time so i need to wind it up by 12:30 uh, please 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 come fast because uh, without hands on lab i don't think so i will justify the session because theory is like you can learn it anywhere but this is something which is very much required okay so let's start so 
uh, what we are going to use is we are going to use scikit-learn, uh, which is called a scientific computing library, which is uh, which was uh, which helps us to write our models without uh, without actually writing everything from scratch. We just need to uh, call some methods and then they will do the task for us. So you don't need to write anything from scratch. You can actually have predefined methods and you can do this. So let's go here. So again, it will show you the prompt. Uh, just ignore this because I'm not stealing your data. So no worries. The link is posted in the, okay, yeah. Yeah, Parvesh shared the collab link as well. So that is fine. I was also about to share that. Okay, so here we have, uh, let's run this and see the output. So what we are going to use is we are going to use a predefined data set. So we are going to import uh, data sets from SKLearn. So SKLearn has a module which is called as data sets. And in that, there are a lot of data sets available. One of the data set is Iris. What is Iris? Iris is a flower data set. So there was a scientist who was like, I mean, uh, he was uh, a very good scientist. So he wanted to collect a data set. So he collected a data set of flowers. Now he was um, very, uh, so, it was it is like a very versatile data set can be used for supervised machine learning unsupervised machine learning and um, you can use it for literally any problem you can use it for regression you can use it for classification uh, you can use it for clustering that is unsupervised machine learning so you can use it literally for everything okay and this is uh, this is like something which is uh, which i really like about this data set so before uh, going to machine learning problem we need to understand the data set like we did for identifying couples or not I, re I hope you remember. <laughs> uh, so I, I guess um, people have gone uh, to clear their uh, recent emojis <laughs> right now because they know I know the secret. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm not coming to check your mobile phones, but people who are attending this session might. So please <laughs> concentrate here, okay? So how was data set collected? So the data set was collected. Um, uh, it was having four columns. So total five columns, one target, that is Y, 4x so x1 x2 x3 x4 4x four features and one y that is the target and the four x's had sepal length sepal width petal length and petal width so what is a sepal and what is a petal so you can see i have visualized it this is how a sepal look like and this is how a petal looks like okay and uh, what the scientist did was he collected the length of sepal in centimeters and petal in centimeters okay so this is a hello world of machine learning so you will see this everywhere okay so everyone is going to kind of give you this same example okay because this is the hello world of machine learning so if you are a complete beginner this is for you but if you are an advanced user then you might feel this as uh, a very stupid problem obviously i'm going to conduct advanced sessions in the coming days so you can keep following my channel and you will see that in coming days so let's load the data set. So as we, as I told you, the data set is already available in the data sets uh, uh, library, which uh, is there in the scikit-learn. So we loaded using the function called as um, iris, load iris. And then we just uh, run this using shift enter. And then it will display the data. So the data has 150 rows. How many rows? 150 rows, 50, 50, 50, 150 rows, okay? So every example has 50 uh, examples. So if you count the number of zeros here, they are 50, number of ones, 50, number of twos, 50. So they have uh, three different uh, versions of flowers. So here is, uh, so as you go up, there is Setosa, Versicolor, and Virginica. They all belong to Iris class, okay? So we have these three different classes. So if you see sepal length, sepal width, petal length, and petal width. So you can see that using feature names. Now let's uh, run this and let's run the target. So we will see zero one. Why we have converted it to zero one and two? Why not uh, we have kept them as Versicolor, Virginica or Setosa? Why is it so? Can anyone tell me? Yes, can anyone tell me why is it so? Why we have mentioned this zero one and two and why not as Versicolor, Setosa and Virginica. Why need to mention it as 012? Why can't I just write the text or the class name? Yes, anyone in the comments? Okay, so because uh, text is hard to process and machine learning is maths, so 
yeah you need to kind of put them into zeros or ones and twos else it will compute it will require a lot of compute resources as well so yeah that's the reason so uh, let's uh, convert them into uh, let's see what uh, these zero ones and twos represent so zero represents uh, setosa one represents versicolor and two represents virginica yeah easy to understand easy to understand for computer okay not for humans obviously for humans, uh, better is uh, we, we like uh, set us our version again, versicolor instead of zero ones and twos. Uh, but for, for memory management, for effective RAM consumption and uh, effective maths, because machine learning is maths, okay? So even if you don't know maths, you can uh, go to intermediate level of machine learning. But after that, you will be stuck. You cannot proceed uh, further, okay? So, yeah. So as I told you in the last example, uh, what we are going to do is we are going to put x in the features and y as the target and that's what we are doing here x and y and then we will execute it using a decision tree so what is a decision tree so we will see what is a decision tree you might have learned that into in statistics so again i'm going to write the complete program again so i'm going to import the data set now i'm going to import a decision tree classifier so i will talk about this later okay splitting um, and then i'm going to load the data set and then I'm going to load the data, then the target, and then split it. Okay, so why I'm splitting this data set? Because uh, I don't have testing data differently. So I need to split the training data into uh, the given data into training and testing with a ratio of 80 to 20. That's why 0 0.2, that is 20% as test size and 80% as train size. And there is a function for that, that is train test split. You don't need to manually do that. And then I need to define the model. So I'm defining a model called as decision tree classifier why because this is a classification problem zero one or two output right so either it is zero either it is one either it is two that is that is why it is a classification problem okay uh, discrete discrete output not continuous output now let's fit the model so fit what does fit command do so fit is the brain of the model okay and feature engineering is the heart of the model okay so okay sorry i told it uh, reverse so what I wanted to say is the fit is the brain of the model and feature engineering is the heart of the model. Okay. So what does that mean? What does fit do here? Okay. So fit has two parameters, X train and y, y train. Okay. X train is the input, uh, the features and Y train is the target the corresponding target. So let me explain you. Okay. So what we are going to do is, um, we are going to take an example. Okay. So, um, how many GBs is this? How many GB is this? If this is one zero two four MB, um, how many GBs? Yes. Can anyone tell me? one gb what about this what about this one two zero four That's true, GB, right? We know that because we already know the conversion, right? So if I say, um, you know, 40 GB is equal to how many MBs? Now this becomes difficult. So what operation are you going to do with this 40 GB? Yes. This seems easy. Let's do it. 49 let's make the max difficult okay so now this is where uh, the human minds come to a halt mostly there are a few people who can actually do this but uh, not me obviously not but we know the calculation the calculation is 49 into 1024 and that will give us uh, the gps okay so yeah that is there okay so how machine learning will actually do this okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how machine learning really works, how fit really works. So what fit is going to do is one zero two four. So we need to provide some input data. So we need to provide some input data here. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use 
machine learning to generate this input data, obviously. And this is going to be my x. And uh, I have y. So I'm going to say 1, 2, 3. And then my Excel skills are good. So please don't be surprised. This is also kind of machine learning. <laughs> so this is our training data. So let's say if someone says that uh, we they need, uh, they need something like, uh, you know, Two zero four eight zero. Oh, sorry, two. I need to write that as two. So, how many GBs is this? So, if I need to write a machine learning model here, so in that case, I will have to write a program like a decision tree classifier. So, this is a uh, which problem is this? Is this a decision? Uh, it is a classification problem or a regression problem? Yes. Is it a classification problem or a regression problem? Correct. It is a regression problem okay so let's um, let's solve this regression problem so we are not going to use classification we are going to use regression so what uh, what in regression we do is uh, we actually draw a line a slope okay so the equation is y is equals to mx plus c okay where m is the slope of the line okay uh, then x is the x uh, um, x axis, y is the y axis, and then c is, c is what? Okay, banner. Okay, sorry. Uh, yeah, I guess the banner is blocking some views. That is true. Okay, uh, okay, so you were not able to see anything which I typed. Okay, no problem. Just give me a minute because I was doing it on Excel. Uh, I didn't know I was not sharing the screen. Sorry for that. I will do it on Google Sheets. Works both the ways. Sorry, sorry, sorry. So this is what I was typing alone from so much time. Uh, thank you for telling me. Okay, now this is clear, I guess. So I was typing this from so much time, but I was not able to show you. Okay, so this is how um, um, like um, a training might look. And if I want a machine to, for example, that case, any X, if I want to find the Y corresponding Y, uh, I need to kind of uh, tell my machine learning uh, this is a regression problem. So what I need to do is I need to kind of uh, give uh, find this equation y is equal to mx plus c. Now for calculating slope, so how how do I do that? Anyone? What is the, what is the formula for calculating slope? Come on. Yes. So what you can ideally do is uh, you can actually uh, use the formula which is inbuilt. So what we are going to do is we are going to, going to calculate individually y. Uh, uh, we are going to calculate obviously m, okay, and we, we we need to calculate y. Obviously we need to get the output that is the y. So we are going to calculate uh, y. Then we are going to calculate c that is the intercept, and then we are going to pass x. We are going to pass x, and then that is going to give us the output. So this is going to be our y, okay? So y is going to be an equation. So now x. So what I what I need to do is I need to calculate the slope. So what I can do is I can use a function by default available, which is slope, and then I can pass the input data, and then I can put a comma, and then I I can pass the y data, and then I can close this, okay? And then this is going to give me the slope of this line okay so again i'm going to show you so equal to slope and then it is asking for y and then it is asking for x and then we have the group. Sorry. So y x and uh, so by default it has input uh, uh, as slope. You don't need to calculate it manually. So yeah, we already have it by default. 
now what is the how to calculate intercept so again we have by default input function of intercept and then we need to pass what we need to pass y comma we need to pass x and then we can get the intercept so intercept is slow so usually we replace c by b that is bias okay but uh, currently we are just following the line now for x so what is going to be our x so x can be something which we are going, which we are trying to predict so x x is going to be dynamic okay so it is going to be dynamic so here it is going to be 2408 so we are not going to keep x so we are going to keep x uh, for now nothing okay and we are going to write the equation here so what was the equation equation was y is equal to mx plus c so y is equal to m m okay so y is equal to m into x right so into x and then plus c right this is the equation i hope everyone is able to see okay so for nothing uh, so let's say if i add 0 i add uh, uh, 1 0 2 4 so i should get an output of y as 1 gb yes so if i add uh, 1 1 2 6 4 i should get output as what 11 gb yes i did get an output of 11 gb if i add uh, input of the unknown 2 0 4 8 0 what should be the output what should be the output? I'm watching you in the comments. Come on, some intelligent guy. Give an output. 20. 20. Okay. So that's great. So what we did, we created a machine learning model. And uh, you see this line. So you see this line. This is what fit is, okay? So this line is fit, okay? So I'm going to paint that so that uh, you guys know that, okay, this is uh, this is our fit, okay? And uh, this was our equation. So what is fit? Understanding the relationship between X and Y. What is fit? Understanding the relationship between X and Y, okay? So that is very important if you are able to understand the relationship between X and Y, and then you can actually do the prediction okay so relationship what is sticking to us it is not leaving us so we also don't leave it okay <laughs> but yeah this is one example so this is what is happening here the x is going in and the y is going in and then the fit is analyzing the relationship between x and y and then um, it is predicting on top of that and then we are calculating the accuracy so if you run this the accuracy is 0 0.96 okay now if you run it you will get a different output that is totally possible okay you can get a different output now let's visualize okay so let's let's see how the face of machine learning looks like if machine learning was a person what is hands mouth and you know everything look like so let's run this so there is a image generated called as tree.png so let's see so i see three uh, tree.png and let's open this okay so i opened it here so let's close this and let's open this like this and see so because of the small screen, what I'm going to do is I'm going to minify this. And now I'm able to see this. So this is how um, a tree or the face of machine learning might look like. OK. So you can see how it was able to conclude that uh, if this flower is virginica, versicolor or virginica or setosum, obviously. So you can see the real struggle is about virginica and versicolor because if um, uh, uh, setosa is like uh, very simple and it can be found within the first iteration okay the first iteration and um, when i talk about uh, virginica and versicolor they are like very very different so they need a lot of classification okay so that's why you can see that virginica versicolor virginica and so many different you know kind of parameters are required so yeah so you can see this is like if else but yeah decision tree looks like this okay now you can try your hands on on different models and you might improve your accuracy so earlier it was 9.6 now also it's 
so uh, we will try something called as uh, uh, svm svm is state of an art the best model in scikit-learn and we are going to see what we get so i'm expecting we get an accuracy of 1.0 and yes we have the accuracy of 1.0 what you can do is you can go ahead and do the part two and if you open the part two and do the part two that will be amazing uh, that will be obviously for your knowledge but it is more like in a real world scenario where you are given a data set and you don't use a predefined data set already okay so that is that i leave it up to you because if i try to explain that it is going to take me one more hour and um, yeah so yes let's go back to our presentation okay so this is how the classifier looks like okay so yep so this is a meme if you understand this this is good if you don't understand it <laughs> i can't help it obviously sorry but yeah this is how it looks like uh, so we are so realistic and then it says machine learning is just a statement and then his eyes have something happened to his eyes something like that so machine learning is just if statement so you just saw it right the decision tree was nothing but if else statement right so uh, you might tell me that okay this is how it is but not really so this is one so you didn't actually manually code that if else statement so whenever you write if else, if else statement you manually write right if this then that if this then that but here the rules were generated for you you didn't generate the rules the rules were automatically generated so that's why machine learning okay so machine learning is sometimes called as automation of automation so what is automation i hope you don't know and what is automation of automation so generating so one is rules okay rules is what automation if this do that if this do that and what is automation of automation generating rules based on the data okay so yeah so now you will ask me then what is deep learning what is uh, artificial intelligence you are only talking about machine learning so deep learning is uh, so machine learning is just a smaller part then there is deep learning then there is artificial intelligence so what is artificial intelligence or artificial general intelligence it is uh, artificial intelligence is about replicating human beings replicating how humans think replicating how humans kind of do tasks on a daily basis okay so that's what ai is so for example driving a car okay so how accurate are we at driving a car we want a machine to be that accurate or driving a car that is artificial intelligence okay what is agi agi means artificial general intelligence what does that mean that means the machine should be able to do whatever the human can do so that is agi how far we are from agi we are not even one percent close to agi that is artificial general intelligence why i'm saying that because humans are so complicated humans are so amazing that you will not be able to generate a human being an artificial machine to you know just like human beings because that is going to be next to impossible okay that is very very much not possible okay so uh, artificial intelligence some great examples of artificial intelligence is self driving car obviously so now the cars are smarter than us they can actually detect a pedestrian which is uh, like far away and you cannot detect it but they can detect it uh, then what is deep learning so deep learning is an technique so a small difference between machine learning and deep learning is that deep learning doesn't uh, so deep learning is very effective and it is like humans so it tries to replicate human examples so for example i showed the image of yan ligan right so yan ligan doing machine learning so yan ligan was doing uh, this uh, using deep learning this was not machine learning okay this was deep learning so this was deep learning where he was using deep learning he was using neurons and he was training the neurons on a set of images and then they were learning so what is the what is the difference between machine learning and deep learning there is only one small difference that deep learning cannot explain itself so it cannot tell you why it selected a specific feature for classification okay uh, or why it selected a specific uh, feature for uh, activating this layer it cannot tell you that interpretability is hard very hard though there are some tools which you can use but obviously it is hard but in machine learning as you saw in the code lab right we were able to generate the whole decision tree and we were able to understand the whole logic of how this went okay so that was possible uh, using machine learning right so i told you so you can see this right now if you forgot so you can see this images uh, tree.png and you know that uh, machine learning was able to tell us that this is the rule which i used this is the a rule this is the b rule and that is the in interpretability, interpretability is very easy okay so let me let me give you an example 
uh, what are you going to trust? Are you going to trust uh, a surgeon with 10 years of experience, a human surgeon with 10 years of experience, or a machine uh, with uh, with like, uh, so I will I'll write it down for you so that it is easier for me as well. So this is a question given. So what would you prefer? A machine learning doctor with 90% accuracy, uh, which has never operated before, but claims that it has 90% accuracy, how it claims it using data, previous data, which is available, OK? And or a human doctor who does a surgery and who has a 10 year of experience. But if he uh, you know, operates on 10 people, uh, he is not able to save 2.5 of them. So you know that uh, you know the accuracy of this machine doctor is great, greater than the human doctor. But you won't trust the human, uh, the machine doctor, right? And you will definitely trust a human doctor because obviously, whom are you going to beat if the operation goes wrong? You cannot beat a machine, kind of. But <laughs> keeping the goats and <laughs> jokes apart, sorry, there was a dark humor. So. Um, Keeping the humor apart, uh, we are obviously going to trust humans because we know that uh, we know that thinking process is not going to, you know, uh, intentionally kill that person. There might be some mistake or there might be some complications. Maybe because of that, um, you might not be able to do so. But if machine kind of, you know, uh, gives you a shock and doesn't tell you why, then that is a problem. Yes. So Jan Ligan tweeted this, okay, a problem statement and to explain where we are. Okay. So yeah. Um, Going back to some important concepts, how how does this work in real world? I told you already. How much data do you need? You need a lot of data. Uh, for self-driving car, you need tetrabytes of data. For a problem like apple and orange, you need less amount of data. How is tree created? We just saw the tree, how it is created. What makes a good feature? An independent feature creates a good feature. Okay. Anything which is independent. So instead of you can uh, use something called as uh, TensorFlow or PyTorch, which is our machine learning libraries, which can help you to do machine learning very effectively and easily without uh, fearing. So you can deploy these models. You can use these models for a number of things. So the example which I was talking about in the previous post, the about boyfriend and girlfriend for example, or relationship for example, for that example, I have really created a model. So I was very curious and I created a model with my team. Um, uh, Smith and uh, Omkar, and uh, we will deploy that soon. Okay. So I'm not going to explain more. Just uh, what is a TensorFlow? So scalar, um, a small one number scalar, group of number vector, group of vector matrix, group of matrix table, group of table tensor. So matrix is also referred sometimes as table, but uh, I prefer to say a group of uh, a larger number of matrices together as table and then a tensor so what is a tensor a tensor is an n-dimensional array so usually when you go ahead uh, in your future you will not uh, see small data sets like iris or housing or xyz small data sets you're going to see big data sets and they will be represented in a form of tensors tensors or n-dimensional array so you can see this slide uh, this is uh, this is a piece which i took from medium and this is amazing because it explains the concepts very easily Okay, so I already showed you the demonstration, but again, if you want some more demonstrations, I'm going to post some links here. So there is something called as uh, Rise of ML, which is an amazing uh, thing 
which I really like. So if you are a new to machine learning and if you want to see visually, so you can go to slice of ML. That is a very great website. So I'm going to post it in my channel where you can access it. Uh, go to the channel and have to look at the URL. So that is great. Apart from that, uh, yeah. So this was one. Again, um, when there are humans, there are biases, obviously. So there is a bias. Uh, and uh, most of the times, we kind of end up doing biases in machine learning. So that is more like a human bias in technology. And everyone has their own biases, so they include that bias in machines. And in return, so for example, uh, there is a very good, uh, uh, like, so uh, Google Photos and like back in 2014, they labeled black men as gorilla. Now that is very sad, very racist of Google being labeling a black man as gorilla, but that was a machine learning algorithm. So yeah, uh, that was uh, human bias, which is included in technology. So are humans smarter? Absolutely, yes, we are smarter, and we will be smarter <laughs> for time being. Yes. Um, so what is in the future? In the future holds much more uh, things. So for example, a data scientist developing AutoML. And AutoML empowers every individual kind of to make machine learning models. So data scientists are losing their jobs, obviously. So if you're learning data science, be very quick. Be uh, be very quick and become an expert. If you don't become an expert, then you might again not get job even after learning machine learning. That might be difficult. So there are some demos and examples which I'm uh, going to sh show you later on. So I'll show you your do check out this example okay this is an amazing example i really love this okay so i'm going to post that on uh so i'm going to post this here as well so that you can see it here I'll show you one example of deep learning, how a deep learning might look like. So uh, OK, where is it? Yeah, this is the example. So this is how a deep learning on. Uh, so the how you saw Lan Ligon, right? How he trained a deep learning neural network for identifying digits. So this is an example of how a, a deep learning model might look like. Again, this exam, this uh, session was not more like understanding deep learning, but machine learning. But I'm going to show you one example. So let's say I write three. So, yeah, this is how a three is going to be visualized, and it can be used. Uh, this is not developed by me, okay? So this is developed by uh, Oak Dalto. He is. Uh, you can check out his uh, GitHub. It's amazing. I really like this. So you can clear this and I can again write one. And see how this one is getting visualized in a three dimension space. Oh, sorry. Again, I lost you guys. OK. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Again. So I guess now you're able to see this. So if I was able to write three, so here I go. Banner, OK, removing the banner. Give me a minute. Uh, remove the banner. OK. So how good the visualization looks. OK, awesome. So I'm going to write one again. So I'm going to write one. And it is pixel level represented. So this is how deep learning works, OK? So this is a classic example of deep learning, OK? So you can see how it is able to kind of identify and give a proper output, OK? So this is deep learning. Cool. So I hope this example is good. Um, moving back to, OK, I also had one more example, which is um, OK, this one is a different one. This could be good.
So because my camera is already accessed by one application, it might not allow to access to this application, but I might try it again. Let me check if yeah, it does work. Okay. Oops, oops, oops. Just cancel it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is it working? Hello. Okay. So it will give you different parts of your body um, there. Hello. It's lagging a bit because um, I, my camera is already accessed by one entity, right? So that's why. So, but this is good. Uh, this uh, this is how you can actually have uh, or understand different parts of the body as well. This is a really good example called as body pics. So there are great examples, which is deep learning at its core and uh, work on the concept. When I talk about the hottest job in machine learning as of now, so it includes uh, machine learning engineer, application develop, uh, development analyst, backend developer, a full stack engineer or a data scientist. You know, sales is also one of the major jobs. So if you are not technical, you can join that as well. And as I told you, by 2024, we will have uh, more computer jobs than the computer graduates today. Today also we have more more than like 50% uh, of the people working in IT are from non-IT background, like electronics, mechanical, or civil. Sorry for that. Sorry for that. Mm -hmm. um, my internet got switched off, so I had no option but to switch back and connect to my backup plan. And I hope the backup plan worked. So I'm back within before I lost you guys. OK, so I guess I'm back. Yeah. So yeah. So second year winter was uh, uh, like uh, after that second AI winter, people really thought that AI is something which is not so good, which cannot actually. Uh, so people were very, you know, rude about it. And Geoffrey says that in his interviews. So you can uh, look at that interviews and you can go through it. Okay. And in 2012, deep learning came into uh, into the uh, real picture where everyone was talking about deep learning. And I learned uh, machine learning and deep learning in around 2014 and 2015. So yeah. So thank you everyone for joining in and that's the end of the session. Hope you enjoyed it uh, and I really would love to take questions. You can connect me at this given handles or subscribe my channel to uh, 
see more upcoming videos on advanced topics so this was quite a basic topic and i would love to kind of uh, cover advanced topic in the near future so thank you so much i hope you have uh, filled the feedback form and got your certificates if not yet i'm sharing the link right now and ask your questions i am happy to take any questions regarding machine learning artificial intelligence deep learning so yeah keep in mind that most of our users are uh, beginners so yeah please use uh, ask beginners question even if you have advanced question i can uh, answer that no problem with me thank you so much for joining in we had at peak 150 people and i hope you really enjoyed the session okay so please ask your questions. So there is a question called as what is a neural uh, network? So a neural network, um, so in deep learning, we, uh, so in deep learning, actually we have neurons and perceptron, which actually have, uh, which, uh, which we use uh, for training a model. So if you say, if you talk about um, how human body works, so let's say this is my hand, right? So if someone, if a mosquito comes and bites it here, so what will happen is uh, uh, I'm going to feel a pain and my body is going to react. So how the whole process works uh, is how the neural network uh, are really in human body. And we try to replicate neural networks in, in terms of uh, artificial, uh, we, uh, so in terms of uh, making sure that machine learns the same way how human learns. So yeah, that is like um, about neural networks. So I will include Parvez here. So hello Parvez, uh, you're live and in stereo. Is it possible to train? So there was one more huge, uh, again, question. Is it possible to train huge data set like two terabyte using classification algorithm? um yes you can train two terabytes of data but again uh, if you're using so much amount of data you need to data a lot of time and you can use different techniques to do that but yeah you can train n number of data using uh, classification algorithms um that is quite possible yes so there are uh, where is the feedback form okay okay feedback form um I'll share the link. Uh, Parvis, can you please share the link in the chat? Yeah, sure. Any more questions? Anyone have any more questions? OK. It was really a wonderful session. Thank you so much. Yes. Thank you so much. How can you continue with this? So this is a uh, this is a good question. Uh, you can follow my channel. I'm going to post all the resources there. So if you want to get started with it, you want to uh, make a career out of it, I'm going to post all the details there. Or you can ping me personally. Uh, there are different paths for different people. So if you are a programming, if you are from programming background, or you're from non-programming background, I need to understand that, and then uh, I can actually definitely help you. But this is individually curated. I cannot give you a a, a like solid pathway to everyone so that. Uh, and that is wrong most of the times because it doesn't work for everyone. So yeah, you can ping me. I will be more than to help you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you for attending. Thank you so much for attending. OK, any more questions? Any more questions? Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Thank you so much. So how many number of features can be taken uh, for a sample from a huge data set? So it really depends on how valuable the features are. So if all are valuable features, you need to take all of them. So yeah, that is there. Uh, it only depends on how variable the features are and how uh, good uh, uh, so uh, how good the features make so it is really really uh, like uh, depends on how you are uh, uh, like how they correlate with each other so there is no like minimum feature or maximum feature but you can actually uh, use all of them yeah
okay there was uh, one one more uh, question i missed it svm where is it i saw an, a slide of svm yeah so i i did mention uh, about svms in that uh, code lab there is a theory mentioned there so just give me a quick uh, uh, minute so if you see here i have mentioned the theory about svm uh, support vector vector machines so uh, the uh, svm is one of the most prominent machine learning models in uh, scikit learn and before the invention of like uh, you can say uh, deep learning or neural networks we used svms because svms were uh, svms provide uh, provided uh, great accuracy because you you saw that um, uh, by using decision tree we were getting 93 to 96% accuracy and by svm uh, we got uh, around 100% accuracy because uh, because uh, one of the major factor is kernel uh, regular uh, regularization uh, which is not available in other models mostly uh, in scikit-learn obviously i'm talking about scikit-learn specifically and the advantage is that um, it performs uh, very well uh, by all the algorithms even uh, better than navy bias algorithm uh, but uh, at the same time it consumes a lot of resources uh, and it takes a lot of time to train that model so yeah that is there uh, okay So, I guess we are uh, done. Uh, thank you so much for attending. Thank you so much for attending. So, I, I usually like to end my session by saying that, uh, uh, you know, humans are hooked up, but machines are learning. So, humans you need to learn as well, and not just machines. Okay. So, yeah. I hope no one have questions. Uh, can we wait for one minute? Sure, sure, sure. <laughs> okay, thank you so much uh, for your appreciations. Okay, there is one more question, I guess. Um, in SK Learn model estimator map, it mentions that to be less than 100K. So, what happened when the data is above 100K? So are you talking about 100K nodes in the map? So let me switch back to the map. Uh, okay, I don't see anything here. So, are you referring to the uh, data, uh, the estimations of uh, the model? Okay, just give me a minute. Okay, so you're talking about the general, okay. So in that case, uh, let's say if you have um, uh, 100K and above data, you can use better models. You can use um, deep learning models, or you can use, uh, uh, even here, you can use uh, support vector machines. And in that, you can uh, divide your data into different chunks, and uh, you can pass them to your model by using um, uh, cross-validation. So what I have done is I have uh, given that in second notebook. So yeah, that might be helpful. You can contact me as well. I can give you some tips if you have a lot of data and you need to solve that using SQLearn only. Uh, use of ML in hacking. Uh, yes, machine learning has been used for hacking. Most of the cases preventing hacking. So if you log in into your Google account, what it does is it uh, deploys a machine learning algorithm, which actually checks the background, checks the location, checks if you could travel to that location within that amount of time from your last login details, and then uh, might give you some, uh, uh, like uh, if uh, it might allow you or might not allow you. So yeah, it is prominent, and there have been a lot of applications of hacking in, uh, uh, applications of hacking in ML using ML to hack systems or something like that. Because you can actually replicate things and you can, uh, so mostly we use for preventing hacking, but uh, yeah, that is there.
yes or no, uh, please contact me i will definitely check it out though i haven't tried it with so many so much of data but uh, i definitely think there is a way in which uh, this can be done so please contact me i will be more than happy to you know uh, help you out and see that I, I think we can close the session. I think. Okay, sure. We will close the session. Thank you so much for attending. We should have a few people. So, anyone? Any more questions? Anyone? Okay. Thank you so much. Um, Parvez, you can take over. Yeah. Thank you so much, Ali Mustafa, for accepting our request and conducting an amazing webinar uh, with a lot of hands-on session, which would be a good one for beginners for starting here. And uh, I, I think I hope they must understood uh, very well about machine learning and deep learning and how to get started with that with your good resources and the way you thought. Really, thank you for that, Ali Mustafa. Thank you so much. So, uh, if you guys are looking for an advanced session where you can actually code up a neural network. we can contact that uh, in near future okay thank you everyone thank you. for joining us thank you all okay